All right, another wonderful day. Let's see what we can get done today. We had some high winds come through last night, so let's go see what we got. Okay, well, we left last night with three pieces up, but we only clamped them because we weren't sure their positions. But now we got three pieces on the ground with some damage. Well, that's the way it goes. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm here back at my lean-to. Finally got all the welds done. My next step was gonna to be to paint where I did the welding and some touch-up, but I'm gonna switch that up for several reasons. The main reason is the wind is always blowing this time of year. I was planning on using my spray gun. And if I wait for the wind to die down, I'll never get it painted. Maybe with the tin being on, it won't be a factor. Now I'm not looking to win any awards with my paint job. So I'm, I'm thinking about just brushing it on, maybe a roller, just, you know, just get the wheels covered up. So now it's time to start the process of getting this tin on the roof. So let's go to the shop. Well, if you watched my previous episode, then you saw me take this tin into the shop. So this is what I bought to put on the roof of my lean-to. Apparently they give you a cover sheet of just some, I don't know. I didn't know they did that, but I got me a piece of red tin. I don't know what to do with, but let me take that off. And let me tell you what my plan is. Uh, I learned a while back that it's a lot easier to pre-drill all your holes for where your screws are gonna be. That way, when you're up there on the roof, all you do is put a screw where the hole is and you're good to go. So I got to lay out my measurements and put in my holes. But before I can do that, I got to block it up because it's laying on the floor and the drill bit's got to be able to go all the way through. So let me start that, find some wood that I'm going to use to block this up and get going. I got the power to lift this up. Will the board fit under there? Well, I was going to try to put boards underneath all this, but I didn't want to disturb the stack because it's pretty tightly stacked at the end already. And I didn't want to have to restack it. I was trying to lift it up with this, but tin is heavy. So I'm just gonna pull that cover off, mark it up, and start drilling. It's April the 8th, 132. That means there's an eclipse going on. Let's go see it. Wow, it's cloudy, can't see a thing. You know, I was going to go to Arkansas where there was going to be full sun, but my date stood me up, so I decided to stay home. Oh well, look, and it's even raining. Back to work. Let's set it over here. Yeah, that did a real good job of flushing the ends. So I'm ready to mark. Okay, I'm gonna start marking where my screw holes go. Uh, so I got a sample piece of the purlin. 
So what I want is an inch and a half of tin at the end of my purlin. Then I also want to put my screw in the middle. So I have this marked out, the distance for my screw holes. So my first one is gonna go uh, right here. And I'm just gonna eyeball where they sit here. And then my next one goes right there. And then one goes here. And then one goes there. So that'll be my first row and I'm gonna drill through here. So every one of these will be exactly the same. Well, I've done all I can do. I just hope all the holes are in the right spot. And if they're not, I got silicone. Supposed to pop. The tiniest click ever heard. It's falling apart, is what's happening. That's not one of the new ones? Well, it. There you go. Hope this is worth it. It worked real good when I built this place, but somehow or another, this is giving me a hard time. By cheap drill bits. Well, time for the moment of truth to see if this will be a good idea or another failure. So we're going to put three pieces on, of course, one at a time because they're heavy. Yeah, I got a center line mark this way. Another six inches, three inches, two inches. One, whoa, back your way, two inches. Whoa, right there. Yeah. Now, lift it up and put it on top of a scalpel. I think it'll get, it's uh, balanced enough to get on top of the scaffold. That's all I need.
We're going to need a ladder for you to hold that in. To keep it from flopping. Because it's not balanced enough to stay. Enough. Now you got you have back. to go this way about six feet. Uh oh, we messed up. Pull pull we this way, way yeah. and then pull that way. Yeah, there we go. Whoa. Close enough. We need to uh, turn it around. No, that's good. I gotta do is move one down. I guess you're gonna move two up. Or do we wanna to go to the second from the bottom? I guess we gotta get a feel for what's comfortable. it here and I can lift it that high if I go up another one it'll be harder for me to grab don't you I mean I don't know might be harder for me to get it up I guess I'm just worried about you know making sure it slides over each oh well I I knew that might be a problem but at that point it's already on yeah. and we'll move a scaffold if we up. need to poke it, somebody will right. start going and poking. So, so let me move. You like that height? Um, just because I'm a little shorter if I go down one. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd be doing a lot of overhead moves. All right, I'm going to stick with this height, and then I'll play it by ear. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's try one.
Could that be any so easier? Relatively easy. That's how I planned it. Yeah. And the rest is... Keeping it from blowing off. So, so we, need we didn't bring no clamps. No, we didn't know this was going to work. <laughs> We got three of them up there. Proof of concept as far as putting them on the scaffold and lifting them on, that worked great. Uh, now I'm struggling with how to make sure that they're on square to the building. I had a plan in place, but I'm not sure I like it. So I'm going to simmer over this overnight, come back tomorrow, try to figure, out how, figure it out, and see how much work we can do tomorrow. Wind might be blowing, so we'll see. Back up here on the uh, lean-to build, after we put that tin on yesterday, as you saw, it all blew off. So I got this tape measure stretched back out and we burned a foot when we laid it out yesterday so this one foot mark here is where that tin was sitting so what i'm going to do is make a mark and then mark out where each tin is going to land all along this whole row and then i'll start putting that tin back up here's the mark i made a while ago I always like burning a foot because I don't trust that end of that tape measure when I'm trying to be accurate. So I'm gonna make a mark here at four foot. And then at seven foot. So this mark here is where my first piece of tin, the end of it lands. And this mark here is where my second piece of tin lands. And then later, or maybe right now, we will set up the tape measure and mark three foot marks all the way down. And what I'll do is put a block of wood up against that mark so that that tin, if it's spread out a little bit uh, from the corrugation, then that keeps it from going too far. And that way it'll stay, it'll keep my tin in line all the way and won't uh, spread or contract and get me off line. It worked really well when I put my building up back in 1999. So let me set up and do that and get that out of the way. And then we'll be ready to put some tin up. Well, I got all my lines drawn. And after I did that, I was worried about getting the tin squared. So me and James put up a piece and I didn't get it on video, but we got it up here, got it about as square as I can get it. And I think it's good. So. Next time we get calm weather, we're gonna to try to put all this tin up, 
Don't have time to do it today, but when the weather comes, we'll get it. So stick around and watch that video, and I'll see you next time on My Retired Life. <laughs>